Let's talk about perspective. Um, as you can kind of tell from the title of this video, guys, we are going to be talking about two-point perspective with this exercise today. Um, if you took my foundations class, you have worked with one-point perspective before. Just a little bit of a refresher. If you've taken my class before, this probably looks a little familiar to you. This is the uh, like intro exercise that we do with one point perspective. Um, and you guys are going to be doing something a little bit similar today. We're going to keep it just down to the basics, super, super simple stuff. And then as you know, with everything that we do in my class, it kind of builds in complexity. But if you don't understand the basics, it's kind of pointless to do a whole exercise on it. So we're going to keep it pretty easy today. Um, I'm really just making sure that we have a good foundation of this exercise. And then next week, um, I'll make you do something pretty cool with it. But today is going to be really relaxing, really chill, laid back. You just need a couple things to complete this exercise. First thing you're going to need is a ruler. Um, I love this ruler. It's awesome. It's metal, so it never gets dented. Um, if you guys don't have a ruler laying around your house, um, anything with a straight edge will work for this. If you have a book, if you have an iPad, um, anything that helps you draw a straight line. It's best if you don't try to eyeball this exercise though, because lines get really wonky. And the whole point of this is to make things believable, right? So make sure you have a straight edge. Um, you're gonna need a pencil and a pretty sizable eraser. If you only have this type of an eraser, it'll work just fine, um, but you're gonna destroy it because we erase almost as much as we draw for this exercise. So pencil and eraser, um, don't do this in pen and then um, just a good sized sheet of paper I'm gonna be drawing on my ginormous sketch pad today if you guys don't have this just try to draw on like copy paper printer paper I got my printer right here anything that's about an 8 by 10 size try not to do it on like a postcard because the smaller you do this the harder it is this is an 8 by 10 sheet of paper works just fine try to do something at least this size okay um, to start, much like this little exercise that we do in foundations, we are going to talk about different points of view. We're going to review all like the technical terms, like the horizon line, the vanishing points, um, and stuff like that today. So just follow along in this video, um, do the best you can, try to listen to the instructions before you mute me. I know this is a wonderful thing with the switch to remote learning is you can fast forward mute and listen to music instead of listening to your teachers which is super awesome um so soak in the information first and then I don't care what you listen to because chances are whatever you're listening to sounds a whole heck of a lot better than my voice and I totally get it so let's draw two point perspective okay um let's start with the absolute basics right Ask yourself, what is perspective? Perspective in art um, is the way that you see things. It's you're showing the viewer, you're showing the person that's looking at your drawing right here, um, what you want them to see. You're kind of handing them your point of view um, and saying, look at this. And the whole point of perspective is to kind of give an illusion that makes sense. So sometimes when perspective is off, um, drawings get a little bit wonky. They get a little bit non-believable. And that has everything to do with the technical skills that I'm going to show you here today. So absolute basics. What is perspective? Perspective is the way that we see things. No more, no less. Um, two point perspective is much like one point perspective, but the only thing that changes is the amount of vanishing points that we're giving people. So in order to like kind of explain that to you guys, we got to draw a little bit first. So take your straight edge and I'm going to line it up pretty much in the center of my paper. Um, you can change the positioning of this line, high or low, whatever you want, but for this exercise, try to keep it in the middle. Um, take your pencil, draw a nice straight line across the center of your page. Now, before we start talking about the points, we got to talk about what this guy is. And if you've taken foundations, you probably already know. Um, this is your horizon line. Um, you've probably heard horizon line a little bit in the past. Horizon line, if you're looking at a landscape or if you're outside, um, it's technically the part of the drawing or painting or whatever that kind of converges. The sky converges with the land. It's where the two meet together. If you were out looking over the ocean, this would be where the water turns into the sky. It makes for really good um, sunset paintings and stuff like that. But anyway, 
This line right here is the horizon line. If we were to take our eyes and look straight out into the distance as far as we could see, that is the horizon line. So go ahead and label that for me. Even if you already knew what it was, just do it anyway. It's part of the exercise. Okay, the horizon line. In one point perspective, guys, there's only one point on this line that we kind of converge everything to. So in my other exercises, if I can try and flip to it really quick and show you, when we talk about one point perspective, right, here's the basic kind of layout of that. My horizon line is still in the middle of the page, right? And then here's my one vanishing point. Now a vanishing point is where everything kind of converges into the distance. There's a point um, where your eyes can't see any further. For some of us that happens a whole lot closer than others. Um, some of us need glasses. I'm talking about myself. But um, there's a point in the distance where your eyes physically cannot see anymore, right? Um, so we call these points vanishing points. It's kind of where you draw all of your forms back to. And what this does, guys, is it creates space on the page, right? We have this flat surface, we have this flat piece of paper that we're drawing on, um, and our goal as artists is to kind of trick people into thinking that this goes back further, right? That this is not just a flat space, because if I were to draw all of these, not in perspective, they would just be three squares and my paper would look really, really flat. Um, so that's why we use perspective, guys. It's all about creating space. It's about creating depth. Um, and then the amount of points, the amount of vanishing points that we put into our perspective drawings um, kind of changes the way that people see our things. And you'll, you'll notice this in just a second. Um, so back to our drawing. Back to our little guy right here. Two-point perspective. For this exercise, guys, we're going to keep our vanishing points on the paper. They don't have to be on the paper. If you're making a ginormous painting, your vanishing points can be off the canvas as long as all of your construction lines are drawn back to it, which is super crazy and a little bit advanced. But we're going to keep this pretty simple today. So on your guys' paper, I don't know if you can see this really well, but I'm going to put a vanishing point over here on the edge of my horizon line. And then I'm going to put my second one over on this side. So I've got two points where I'm going to be drawing my forms back to today. So we started with a horizon line, two vanishing points because this is two point perspective and I want you to label these. Vanishing point. And then again over here. I'm just going to put vanishing point because I'm lazy. Okay, two point perspective. Now before we start drawing forms back to these points, I want to talk about points of view, right? If you take your eyes, where can I draw this? I'm going to draw this right here. This is my eye. It's beautiful. It's awesome. It's a stellar picture. If you have your eye, right, and you're looking straight out in front of you, the perspective that we call that is eye level because if you're looking straight out in front of you and you're seeing something that's right here, it's not above, it's not below, it's directly in front of you. So that term, when we talk about points of view, is called eye level. Because we've drawn our horizon line dead set in the middle of our page today, guys, our eye level is going to be even with our horizon line. We are looking straight out in front of us. Um, now, when we look out in front of us, guys, we can still see things that are up here. We can still see things that are down here, right? Not everything we see is directly in front of us. That would be terrifying. Can you imagine driving and only seeing like right in front of you? Anyway, um, above and below eye level. So when you look out in front of you guys, you see a lot of stuff. Anything that's above this imaginary line right here, we refer to as above eye level for obvious reasons, right? And then anything that is below that imaginary line, is going to be below eye level. I hope that makes sense. If not, it will in a second. So we today, we're going to draw three forms, three simple, simple forms in two-point perspective. That's our exercise for today. So as long as you follow along, um, this should be pretty easy for you guys. So why two-point instead of one-point perspective? Why on earth would you choose two points of vanishing instead of one? The easiest way to explain that 
is with a simple form. This is my tissue box. Okay. If I were to draw something in one point perspective, whether it be a box, um, a building, anything like that, when you use one point perspective, you're looking at the side of an object. One part, one side, one edge of this form is directly facing you. That's why when we do one point perspective exercises, the first thing that you draw is the square, right? It's that side that you see. And then everything from that, we connect back to the vanishing point and it puts these sides, excuse me, this side and this side going away from you in perspective. It kind of pulls it back in space. But we don't need to draw this in perspective because it's looking straight at me. This is a rectangle. I don't have to draw it weird. Now, two point perspective is a little bit different. You don't always see things directly like this. What if I told you guys to draw the corner, right? What if you're drawing a city and instead of drawing the houses that you can see like directly like this, what if you're on a street corner and you have to draw the edge of a building? Um, that's what two point perspective is all about guys. It's the edges of forms, right? So if you don't have something that looks like this and you're trying to draw with perspective and you're like, oh crap, I see an edge. That's when your two point perspective brain should switch on. So let's draw some corners. Let's draw some forms with edges on them. Okay. Pick up your straight edge and we're going to start eye level. We're going to start simple. So first thing I want you to do, take your straight edge, and draw a pretty good sized vertical line, just like that. It's not like all the way to the top and bottom of my page. It's just a good start. This is going to mark the corner, the corner that we draw all of our other lines from. Okay. So to start forms in two point perspective, you just need that corner. You need that line. Now we put things in perspective. So we're going to take two points on this line and we are going to connect them to our vanishing points. So the first thing you do is you take your ruler or your straight edge and you make sure it touches the vanishing point over here. If it doesn't touch that, the whole point of this exercise is kind of lost. So I'm going to make sure that it touches my first vanishing point and the top of my line. And I'm just going to draw a nice straight line. Draw this lightly because you don't want a whole bunch of ghost lines because you're going to erase so much of this. These are construction lines. These are just things that are helping me draw, right? And I'm going to do that exact same thing, guys, on the bottom right here. So I'm making sure my vanishing point is lined up with my ruler and I'm also making sure that my straight edge is touching the bottom of my line. And I'm going to draw that construction line up. At this point, it should look like a big old triangle. Nothing crazy, nothing super cool yet. Now, do the same thing on the other side. Vanishing point, top of my line. Draw a nice straight connection. Okay. Vanishing point, line. So now we essentially have this big ginormous diamond going across our page. What this gives the illusion of at this point, guys, is if you were to look at, say, the corner of a building, right? This is showing the viewer, hey, I see the corner of this building here, but as far as the length of this building, this building is so long that it goes on and on and on and on and on into space until I can't see it anymore. It's the world's longest building ever, which is not something we want to draw right now. If you're drawing the world's longest building, you would leave it like this. Um, but we're going to cut this off. We're going to show, we're going to show, hey, this form ends here and it ends here, right? So in order to be able to do that, guys, you got to draw some parallel lines. And I know that a bunch of you guys are awesome at math, so this is going to be super easy for you. But the parallel line that you're going to want to match is this first guy that we drew right here. Because if we take this and we draw non-parallel lines out here, our form is going to look super wonky and weird. So parallel lines are very important, and I'm probably shaking the camera. I'm sorry. So here we go. I'm going to take my straight edge and depending on how far away from that corner I draw my parallel line, the longer this building or this form is going to appear. So if I keep it really, really close, it's going to be a really, really short blocky form. So take your ruler and I want you to decide where that form ends and wherever you decide that form ends, you're going to draw a nice parallel line to this center. 
that goes from the top construction line through the horizon line all the way to the bottom, just like that. Make sure it doesn't go out here or out here because outside of those lines, the form no longer ex exists. Once you've cut this off, guys, we'll erase the rest of this over here because you're showing me, hey, this is the edge, right? This is the edge. This is the original corner. This is the edge that we just drew, okay? Same thing on the other side. This one, I'm gonna make this one a little bit longer just because I want to. And as long as it's parallel to that original edge that we drew, it will be just fine. So now I've essentially drawn my tissue box. Now I want you to grab your erasers, guys, and I'm gonna shake the crap out of the camera and I apologize if I make you seasick, but anything after these edges that you've drawn is no longer necessary. We don't need those construction lines anymore. So you're just gonna clean up your drawing a little bit and erase these construction lines that go back to the vanishing points. Don't erase your horizon line yet. Um, we're still gonna use that. If you want to erase the construction line that goes through the center of this, though, you absolutely can because not all forms are see-through, right? If this is my tissue box, you can't see the horizon line going through the middle of it. It's not there. I've got ghost lines, which are atrocious. Draw better than I do. Okay, sweet. That essentially is our form at eye level. When something's at eye level, guys, you can't necessarily see the top or the bottom of it because you're looking straight at it, right? If I keep this eye level for you guys, you can't see the top or the bottom of it, right? You can just see those sides that we just drew. This form is eye level for you. Now, we're gonna draw with some different points of view. We're gonna draw a form that's above eye level. So here we go. Let's clean this area up a little bit. Now, we're gonna play with this perspective up here. In order for something to be above our eye level, it has to be above this horizon line that we've drawn. And you start this the exact same way that you started the last one. So somewhere up here in this space, right, you're gonna start with a vertical line because we're doing cubes today, why not? So I'm gonna do this, a nice sizable, make sure you guys can see that, vertical line, not super big, it's about the same size, maybe a little bit smaller than my first one. And I, for the first little bit, am going to follow these exact same steps for making the construction lines as I did on the first one. And now, if you wanna mute me, like if this is super easy for you and you're like, okay, I get it. Fast forward this part, just make sure that your form looks like mine. And if you still wanna hang out and chat, keep it real time and we'll go step by step. So the first thing I did was I took, just like the first one, that bottom of the line back to the vanishing point. Top of the line back to the vanishing point. This is two point perspective though, so make sure we don't just connect it to one, we have to connect that top and bottom to our other vanishing point as well. Vanishing point back here and Make sure they touch both at the same time so it's not wonky and weird. Okay, cool. Yours should look like this, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, and then we follow the same steps as we did for our eye level form again. Now we just have to show where this form ends because at this point we're showing people that, hey, this goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever until we can't see it anymore. We're not gonna do that for this exercise, so cut yours off with some parallel lines really quick. I'm gonna have mine go here, making sure that these two are parallel, going the same direction, right? Just like that. And I'm gonna do one more over here. That is, boom, that long. So up until this point, guys, we've done the exact same steps for both of our forms. Now, things change a little bit. This is why I love two-point perspective so, so, so much because you can get some really complex looking drawings without really having to do anything complex. If you can remember these simple, simple steps, corner, 
construction parallel, right? If you can remember that, you can draw some crazy, crazy complex stuff. For above and below eye level, you just have to remember one more thing, and that's the side that you can see, right? Because this form is above our eye level, guys, whenever something is raised above you, this is going to be backwards for you guys because it's upside down. But whenever I raise something above my eye level, I can see the bottom of it because I'm essentially looking up at the bottom of it. So what we need to draw for people right now is the bottom of this form. And it's super, super easy to do. You just have to remember opposites. Okay. So now we're going to draw from this line, this outer, outer line, back to the opposite vanishing point. Opposites attract. So I'm taking this bottom and drawing it all the way over to that vanishing point. Crisscross. Opposites. However you remember this is great because if I were to mess up and draw this bottom back to the vanishing point, oh crap, I've already got a line there. So it should be pretty easy to tell which vanishing point you're trying to cross it to. Always the opposite. And you're going to do this on both of your sides. So I've got this guy here which means that I'm going to come over to this other guy here and do the crisscross. Just like that. Now what I've drawn, guys, is I've drawn the bottom side of this form. It now looks like a cube. It's no longer just this weird oblong diamond in the sky. This is my form. I can see the side, the other side, and I can see the bottom because it is above my eye level. Looks like it's floating up in the sky, which is really cool. The last step from here, guys, is just erasing all of your construction lines, which you're going to have a couple more because we had to draw a couple more for this, which is fine. But once you erase the construction lines, things get a little bit more clear and you can kind of see, see your forms a little bit easier. Again, make sure you're drawing kind of light. Um, ghost lines are kind of inevitable at some point, but we want to keep these drawings as clean as possible clean as we can. Okay. Okay. That's it. That is our above eye level form and it looks super, super cool. Um, I love this cause I like to imagine, um, sorry, gotta clean up. I like to imagine like a little worm, like down here on the ground. If you guys took foundations, you remember the worm guy, right? If I draw my little wormy friend down here, worms don't have eyes, but mine in my examples always do. If I've got this little worm guy and he's looking up and this thing is above his eye level, he's like, holy cow, I can see the bottom of that form. How cool, right? Um, so whenever you see the bottom of a form or you're trying to show the bottom of the form, you are telling the viewer, hey, this is above your eye level. This is above you. You're looking up at it. Easy peasy, right? Time for the grand finale. We are going to work with something that is below our eye level. So I want you guys, if you can, uh, see if you can do this one on your own. It's the exact same steps as the one up here. I'm going to do it in real time with you. So if you get confused, just unmute me. Um, but see if you can draw one below eye level 100% by yourself. Good luck. Okay, starting, we're going to go below the horizon line below our eye level because that is what we are trying to show. And just for the sake to keep things interesting, I'm going to draw mine over here. Okay. And here we go. Step one, draw that corner. Step two, keep it simple, top and bottom to the vanishing points. Drawing our construction lines, setting stuff up for later. Okay. Boom. And boom. Just like that. Now, Remember, we have to give the illusion that this form ends. It has edges. I'm going to make this a little short squatty box just because that's fun. So I'm going to make sure my edges are parallel. I'm going to scoot this out and draw my form. My form is going to end here. Same thing on the other side. Keeping it parallel. 
my form is going to end here. Okay. Now we have to do that super top secret extra cool magical step that I showed you up here. I don't know why I'm so fascinated by this, but the first time I did it, it was like the biggest aha moment <laughs> of my career, which is so sad. Um, but it's cool, right? You're going to connect it to the vanishing point, And then the farthest, farthest top edge. Make sure I can still see that. And I draw my line, right? Furthest, furthest edge. Vanishing point. Crisscross. And we have it. It's a box. And it's super cool. Clean your drawing up. I promise this step is way easier if you just take the time and draw lightly. This part totally sucks if you draw like a steamroller and you have to erase for 10 hours. And I've decapitated the worm. Sorry, little dude. Okay, sweet. Clean your stuff up. Now, because we're talking about something below eye level, a good way to remember this little dude is by drawing, let's draw a bird. This is not going to look like a bird and that's okay. He's gonna have big incredulous eyes because he's so impressed by the beautiful perspective cube that he's looking at. He's looking down at that cube. Look how crooked that line is. He's looking down from the bird's eye view. He is above this form and he can see the top of it, which is really cool. So whenever you can see the top of a form or the top of an object, it is below your eye level. Whenever you can see the bottom, it is above. So again, it's kind of like that opposites attract thing. Um, but that's it guys. So Here's your assignment. Here's your practice that you have to do. If you have followed along in this video and you've done what I've done and you've got three forms and different points of view on your paper and they're all drawn in two point perspective, you've got parallel lines. Um, you've already done this like 90% correctly. The last thing I'm going to be looking for, for this particular exercise, um, is labeling, right? It's kind of like our way of taking notes. It just helps us remember. Because if you draw it and you label it, it's way easier than taking a bunch of pages of notes. So the last thing I want you guys to do once you've got these all drawn is I want you to label everything, right? Show me the horizon line. Label it for me. Where's your vanishing points at? You should have two. Please label both of them. Um, next, I want you to identify the point of view that each of your forms are in. So what I mean by that is this guy was the first one that we did. This is our eye level form. Okay. Do the same for this one and this one here. This one is above. And then this one is below. And then that is all I'm going to be looking for for this exercise, guys. Um, if you want to experiment with this, play around with some different shaped forms, you can put any shape of form, that sounded weird, you can put any form in two point perspective. You can do this with cylinders, you can do this with a shoe, right? Turn these into something cool. Um, in ceramics, I almost said ceramics. In foundations, guys, we take this exercise, right? This super simplified exercise like we just did. And I always challenge the kids to turn their drawings into something weird, right? So here we still have the above eye level, the eye level, and the below eye level forms, which if you look really close at this foot, was still a rectangle, right? But we just talk about how to turn these into things, like if the general shape, right, the simplified form resembles that of these cubes that you just drew, you can turn them into anything. So if we flip to our exercise, right? You could turn these into a lot of cool things. You could turn this into a car. It's really boxy, right? But you could. You could use that simplified form and as long as it's in perspective, you can kind of build on it. 
This is gonna be a really terrible example to show you guys because it's really sketchy and gross, but you can, you can do it. That's awful, that's so bad. I'm gonna draw you guys a better version and prove to you that I'm not a moron and I know how to draw. Give me a second. 